welcome Flip Clock fans. A new member at flipclockfans.com sent me in this clock so I could take a look at it for him. And we're going to try to do some things a little different so it's not boring. It's something new. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to let Haley carry this in for me. Come here, Haley. You want to carry this in? Yeah, better not. Anyway, yeah, we'll try to do something a little different to make it a little more interesting for those of you who've seen some of my other videos on how to get clocks started again. And we are actually going to look at a flip clock. We haven't been looking at flip clocks recently. Here we've got the clock. We're just going to be a little careful so we don't scar it up. And I always show, I always uh, take videos of this kind of stuff whenever I get someone else's clock. I don't always show it. But in case something doesn't uh, turn out right or, I don't know, just to show what's going on. This was uh, packaged pretty good and safely. We got a clock here I haven't had before, or have I? Yeah, I've seen this before. It's just a different color. Nice copal. And it is the Copal Model 227 in the white. The Copal showed up in newspapers around 1972, and it had a long run. The Copal was still in the newspapers in 1980. So the clock was out for a while. It was a popular clock. Here's the instructions for the Copal 227. And it's funny, because sometimes you'll find errors in here. And you see here, they've uh, mistakenly called this an operation indicator. And as you know, it is actually a whirly gig is the proper term. And okay, so this color came in white, black, red, yellow, and wood grain. And this is the white version, of course. I've energized it and you can see that the orange neon globe bulb is working fine. Now, what I'm doing here, believe it or not, sometimes that'll get these clocks started if that whirly gig is stuck. Everything's looking good. I always like to do it once over when I get these clocks. Again, just to see what I'm dealing with, make sure there's no cracks. Sometimes when people get these, if they've tried to take them apart themselves, you'll find evidence of uh, mishandling, and I don't see anything like that. So, now what are we gonna do to get these knobs off? I've already tried to get them off, and they're on there tight. Again, that to me, that's an indicator no one's had them off before, probably ever. So I'm using my old trick that I developed a while back. We're using uh, tape on here. You want to try to avoid the temptation to grab a hold of that with a pair of pliers. Believe it or not, you get a, some tape on there like that, and you can pull it right off. And then we're using a Gorilla tape, of course, the best tape for the job. So we're going to have to do that with the the other knob as well. It's on there tight, so we've done that. This is the uh, alarm silence. And I'm holding that firm as I pull this off. You just pull it straight off. I didn't want to crank on that. I don't know what's going on under there. I've had these before, of course, but I didn't want to put undue force on that mechanism. So it's pretty simple to get these open. Well, initially, anyway. We're taking a Phillips head number one here to get that screw off, and it's a machine screw, fairly small. Now there are tabs here, and you gotta be careful when you're messing with these clocks. And I have opened many a clock and found where someone's forced these open and cracked one of these tabs. Now, I have found these, the white plastics tend to be more fragile for some reason. And the wood grain seems to be, the wood grain clock seems to be a little more, a little more uh, resilient. I don't know, maybe that's just me thinking. So I'm just taking my time and I'm working this back and forth until I get the, get the tabs loosened here. Whenever I'm doing stuff like this, I never force anything. It may look like I'm really cranking on this, but I'm not. It's, I'm just working things free. Now here you can see the original color of the clock and it's definitely yellowed with with time. Okay, again, when I do any kind of clock, I always take videos and pictures just to see how things were laid out. You'd be surprised, simple things will, will get you when you're 
when you're taking clocks apart and trying to put them back together. So we'll take these two machine screws off here in the bottom. Nothing, nothing to report here. Just two simple screws come out, mechanism comes out. Of course, the first thing I check is the whirly gig. So this is the rotor of the motor. That's supposed to be spinning freely. It does spin counterclockwise and it just feels gunked up. I'm looking at the other gears to see if there's any worn gears and I don't see any. So it looks like a pretty straightforward motor cleaning we're going to do here, but maybe we'll do it a little different than you've seen before. We take the two bolts off, remove the shroud here. It allows us to simply pull the motor away carefully. Everything looks fine. There's just a little bit of debris coming out. Again, I don't think this clock has been opened ever before, so just a little dirt, not much at all really though. So we've got the motor free. And again, when you do this to a copal motor, that's supposed to really move. Now this, this really good tape here, I don't want to mess that up. It, it seems a really good shape and I don't want to get alcohol on it or oil or any, anything like that. So we're going to do something a little different here. I'm actually going to use masking tape. I've wondered about that before and we're going to give it a try. This is supposed to be really good masking tape and it's not pulling the print off. So it's, the tape says it's got edge seal technology. And I really need that because I'm going to try to prevent any oil or any solvent, any kind of solvent getting in there. So I've trimmed that back and then I kind of push it down really good to, to get a good seal there. It does seem to be sealing really well. And it doesn't impede the motor from moving. Still feels gunked up, feels the same. Now, as I've been working it and playing with it here, it's actually seemed to start loosening it up already. So that's a really good sign. So we're gonna try something different this time. We're gonna try super glue to see if that will, no, we're not gonna do that. WD-40, I know a lot of people hate that. You'll, have, you'll find people just loathe this stuff, but I'm telling you, it's a good solvent. It's a really good solvent to get, to get things uh, freed up. Then we'll follow it with a good, with a good synthetic clock oil. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it in one of the top holes and letting that drip down the back side. That's going to impact the axle there. There's a bushing there, and already you can see it's spinning. It's spinning great. There's not a lot that needs to be lubricated there. It's just the axle. Now I've plugged it in, and I didn't even have to give it a spin. Usually I have to give it a spin to get it started. And then I'll let it run for a long time. But I didn't have to this time. It really, well, I did let it run. But I really didn't have to because it loosened right up now. Here's the clock oil. And you see it, a lot of it's dripping on the outside. And that's not the intention. But it kind of gives me a, an idea of how fast it's dripping on the inside there. To get down to that axle, you don't need a lot of oil. All this on the outside is waste. I'm going to spin it a while and then I'll run it a while just to get that oil worked into that axle. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot of moving parts. You see the outside moving and it just spins on that little, what I could call an axle. So I'm about done with this. So let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, this edge seal technology worked. It was great. I'm going to have to do that more often. It's been fantastic. So we put it all back together, make sure the clock actually is gonna work. I'm assuming that's all that's wrong. Now don't crank these bolts down. A lot of people get these clocks and they'll just tighten these things down. 
I'm like they're building a space shuttle or something. All right, this clock is working. All that's left is we're gonna get to get it back into its uh, case and there's no reason to show that. Whoa. That, that caught me off guard. I thought I'd, I'd been shocked there for a second. It scared me. The alarms are working great. Okay, there it is. Copa Model 227, the white version. Running like a champ.